So we're at the beginning of 2018 start of a new year. Are you seeing any themes or trends, maybe in your role as a, a partner at Greylock or in other, other parts of your life? Any themes or trends that are going to be big in 2018 that this audience and uh, the guys and girls watching should be thinking about? Well, uh, I'm, my answer here may be a little boring because I'll, the answers may be obvious from a bunch of stuff in the news, but uh, obviously there's a bunch of interesting stuff going on in uh, cryptocurrency. Although, you know, I guess I would say I'm personally hoping for the Bitcoin price to drop a bunch more so I can buy a bunch more, right? So it's like, you know, anyone looking, you know, you know don't buy yet, wait, uh, my own personal view. Readable tweet when it's safe to buy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, and, you know, I think I wrote an article for Wired UK actually a couple years ago uh, because they gave a talk at Davos about, about why uh, there will be one or more crypto capital systems, I called them, because it was kind of like it was a pun on currency, asset, and platform. Currently, what's happening in Bitcoin is mostly digital gold, but it also has this possibility of being currency. And most interesting, it has a possibility of being a platform by which the same way an open platform like the internet opened up an entire generativity of entrepreneurship and innovation and creativity and new services. Because when people were doing TCPIP, they weren't thinking Netflix, they weren't thinking Google, they weren't thinking Facebook, they weren't thinking you know, all of these uh, amazing companies. Um, and that can now possibly be done for the financial system. That's part of what's interesting about it. Yes, you know, there's an interesting thing on just being digital gold and, and actually in fact Bitcoin's better than gold in terms of accessibility, uh, utility, the way that gold is used as a, as a, um, as a uh, anti-hedge against you know, real estate and equities and everything else is part of this. And people say, well, that's because gold has real value. And that's like, it's such a simple misunderstanding. Um, like, for example, uh, I don't know if any of you know this, aluminum used to have real value, it used to be the jewelry, because it used to be much harder and difficult to find than gold, and they didn't have, hadn't figured out how to make it. Right? And now, of course, aluminum is what you buy when you buy you know, a Coke, <laughs> right? Or, or, you know, uh, and so anyway, so I think, uh, there's a whole stack of things in the cryptocurrency future uh, that I think are very interesting. Now, that doesn't mean to say, yes, there's a bubble. Yes, a bunch of the ICOs are totally crazy. <laughs> right? There's a stack of, 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 of storm around it um, that there's a ton of noise. But I think the persistence will ultimately unlock a platform for uh, a new generation of applications that's similar to what the internet has unlocked. And I think that will be very interesting. Actually, one of the things I think we're most excited about mm -hmm. in Singapore, where talking mm -hmm. about local flavors of entrepreneurship, Singapore has really opened its doors up to say, you know, we want to we want to be a place that you can innovate in in this space. In fact, we share an office in Singapore with the Ethereum core team. Ah. So we're sort of, uh, I think yes. we, had, we had our demo day in Singapore on Monday, and I know some of the team, Ethereum team were doing pitch practice with the team, with Excellent. the EF team. So we're seeing a lot of innovation Excellent. in that space in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you know, if it's, it really is Bit, a Bitcoin blockchain, then Ethereum. Those are the places where the platform is most realized and, and most interesting. And then Litecoin does a bunch of innovation, and then you can keep going for a whole bunch of others. So that's one area. Um, another area is, as an investor, I tend to be most focused on what you think of as um, the applications of artificial intelligence. And um, you know, for the last year, I'd say personally I've been most focused on autonomous vehicles um, because uh, I actually think it's a little uh, uh, longer off than most, frequently one of the mistakes that happens amongst technologists, you predict the future coming much quicker than it is. And people say, well, you know, AV, the tech solve, it's here. Well, in order to solve that tech, you know, like for example, in order to have a bunch of AVs in a city, well, you have to build like 10 to 20,000 of them, right? The time to set up the manufacturing, get automotive perfection, have that built at scale. AV is still a ways off, but AV will be in a, uh, autonomous vehicles, will be a huge transformation. And obviously, the most of this crowd, we're, you know, uh, we live in one of the uh, areas where, uh, you know, leading in the world in artificial intelligence, it's gonna apply to a lot of different things. And the notion of which, you know, software is transforming industries, uh, data is the new platform, all of these kinds of things, AI applications are super interesting. Now you still have to, like the, the earlier point about business model hacking is I think still appropriate, like what's your go to market? What's the way that works? Because if you say, well, we're gonna transform medicine, say, um, 
uh, well, transforming medicine, medicine tends to be regulated. Medicine tends to have channels by which payment happens. Medicine ha so you have to think about how do I address all of those things even as I'm applying artificial intelligence to it. 